astronomers have been exploring the universe since before the time of Galileo. They only have found one place that supports life. The beautiful blue ocean covered earth. For every two breaths you take, all the oxygen in one of those breaths comes from the ocean. We need oceans to keep us alive. And our oceans are dying. We're at a critical moment because we are overwhelming the capacity of the Earth's biological systems to continue. And if we're the problem, the only way to cure the problem is for us to figure out how. Marine Conservation Institute is saving wild ocean places for us and future generations. For over 25 years, we've led with the highest standards of science to achieve lasting protection for marine life around the world. We really work a lot on marine protected areas at Marine Conservation Institute, and that is trying to protect whole ecosystems in which um, you know fish populations rebound and coral ecosystems rebound. You know, you get these revitalization of ecosystems. We're trying to ensure that we're putting in place the protections for the ocean now that need to be in place if we want to see biodiversity for our kids and our kids' kids' kids and a home for them on this blue planet. Join us on December 9th for Marine Conservation Institute's 25th Anniversary Gala. With your help, we can achieve another 25 years of conservation success. as our planet struggles with a warming climate, and many of you have shared with me your concern for the future of the ocean. Well, okay, do I start it? You want me to start it from the top? Okay, is, is everything okay here from the, where I'm standing? Okay, right, when do I start? Good evening, everyone, and happy holidays. Thank you for joining us. We're coming to you live tonight from our offices in Northern California wine country, and it's a gorgeous evening here. I hope yours is just as lovely. I'm Angela Morgan, Development Director for Marine Conservation Institute. We are so delighted that you are joining us tonight for a very special milestone. 
our 25th anniversary gala and Blue Parks Award celebration. It's gonna be an inspiring and fun-filled evening. I wanna take just a quick moment here to thank the team that helped put this event together. Our marketing gurus, Diana Parker and Justin Xavier, I am so grateful to you both and much appreciation to our hardworking communications team, Russ Moffitt, Hannah Hindley, and Madeline Sikisian. Our goal tonight is to raise $150,000 to continue our mission of helping to protect the diversity, beauty, and importance of wild ocean places, which we have done successfully for over 25 years. And I know with your help tonight, we can create another 25 years of success. I have the incredible privilege of working with a passionate team of the best and brightest in the field of marine science, some of whom you are going to meet tonight. Our staff is dedicated to finding solutions to some of the biggest challenges facing the oceans today, and your support helps fund this critical work. I know that some of you feel truly helpless as our planet struggles with a warming climate, and many of you have shared with me your concern for the future of our ocean. Well, tonight, your chance to step forward and join us in making a difference to create a world of strong and lasting protection for the ocean's most fragile places and to leave a legacy for future generations. Your support can help turn the tide. Let's not just imagine a resilient, healthy future, let's make it happen together. And now I am honored and so excited to introduce to you our host for the evening, Ian Shive. Talk about a planetary hero. We have him in our midst tonight. Ian is an Ansel Adams award-winning photographer, author, filmmaker, producer, who has traveled the world photographing some of the most isolated and wild places left on earth. He has trekked from the highest peaks to the remotest islands, resulting in him becoming one of the most celebrated and published nature photographers in the world. He has authored several best-selling books, has led expedition teams on groundbreaking missions to Cuba for Discovery Channel Shark Week and to the world's most remote coral atolls for his film Hidden Pacific, which he directed and produced honoring the vibrant marine national monuments at the far reaches of the Pacific Ocean. We are truly honored tonight to have Ian host our 25th anniversary gala. Welcome, Ian Shive. Thank you, Angela. I really appreciate that incredible introduction. And it's so wonderful to be here with everybody tonight. Uh, happy holidays, it's the holiday season. And of course, we're all here because we're thinking about giving and the Marine Conservation Institute needs your help. Um, that is the goal of our evening tonight. Our, 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 our goal is there at the bottom of your screen. You see it, $150,000 is what we're trying to get to this evening. And as Angela said, um, you know, the, Nature, the environment, our oceans, our blue planet are something that I'm incredibly passionate about. Um, in fact, I'm actually on the road right now. I'm joining you from a, from a project I'm working on that is a marine conservation project. And, uh, and if you'll notice, my glasses start to go uh, over the course of the evening a little more crooked. It's because it's the only pair I have left. I've lost already two other pairs on this trip. Um, but it's that passion that we all have. It's the reason we're all here tonight. We're here because we care about our environment. Um, and 30 by 30, uh, what is that? 30% of the ocean to be protected by, 20, by, by 2030. Today, only 3% of the global oceans are protected in marine protected areas that have strong enough regulations to safeguard biodiversity. And the Marine Conservation Institute is using the latest science to guide the mission of protecting at least 30% of the ocean by 2030 but we can't do it without your help or with one eye fogging up while I do this. Um, anyway, <laughs> we need your help. Uh, so please tonight, as we share all of the incredible successes in this in tremendous history of 25 years, consider giving and donating. Uh, you, you have the link there. Um, you see, you can text uh, 25 to the phone number at the bottom of your screen. Um, please consider giving to the Marine Conservation Institute and supporting our blue planet. I'd also like to uh, give you a hint. Uh, we've got Blue Park, Blue Sparks. We have a lot of really great things, great guests, great videos up ahead here over the next uh, hour or so. Um, and I really want to also thank our sponsors, Navis, our global sponsor, 
I uh, really appreciate getting behind the Marine Conservation Institute and SandCloud, our presenting sponsor, a sustainable company that gives back to marine life every single day. So we have a message from Sound, Sound, SandCloud that I'd like to share with you right now. Hello, my name is Bruno, co-founder of SandCloud. You may have seen our company on Shark Tank. We're a brand that gives back to marine life. And today, I want to congratulate Marine Conservation Institute's 25-year anniversary. What an amazing accomplishment. All the amazing work they've done over those last 25 years. Today, only 3% of the world's oceans are effectively protected, and that needs to change. It's not going to happen without organizations like Marine Conservation Institute uh, and their advocacy work and their Blue Park initiatives. It's so cool to see what they're doing and how they're doing it. And we're so happy to be a sponsor and support them through this journey. Oh, look at that. There's the line right there. Now, there's no way you can't miss what we're trying to achieve here tonight. Uh, thank you, Bruno. Thank you, SandCloud, for your support. And this is a great... Great bit of news, $5,000 has been donated by SandCloud, um, already working towards our goal tonight. And we have a really great uh, bunch of different things, different ways that you can participate in the evening. We also have raffle prizes, giveaways, t-shirts, hats. I've got a book, uh, my book, Refuge, uh, um, that we're giving away as well, signed copies of. Um, but a $50 donation buys you an entry to win a bundle of two limited edition Blue Parks t-shirts. Uh, designed by Caitlin Quartz and, of course, the Southern Marine Conservation Institute pint glasses. This is the season. We need those pint glasses. Um, so consider giving your $50 donation for those. With every $100 donation, you get an entry, entry to get a signed copy of my book. Um, and we've got three winners in every category. Every donation of $50 uh, or up earns you an additional entry. Uh, and we're going to draw names after the gala. We'll be in touch by, with winners by email. Um, but definitely check out the raffle. It's uh, a lot of great stuff in there. Um, there's trips. There's uh, there's just there's just so much that uh, I'm really excited about. So definitely click the link um, and uh, take a look at that. Um, the Marine Conservation Institute is uh, such a tremendous organization. 25 years uh, they have been working on behalf of our blue planet. Um, Elliot Norris is the founder, and uh, Elliot um, has a message that he's going to share with us here this evening. But you think about what 25 years is today, and where were you 25 years ago? Where were any of us only two years ago? And you think about what that span of time is and how important each of these quarter centuries are in protecting uh, our oceans. Um, so I'd love to introduce uh, Elliot uh, with a message. 25 years ago, I founded Marine Conservation Biology Institute, inspired by the people I knew who were doing conservation on land and the scientists who were studying and learning about life in the ocean. I decided that we needed to put those two things together and create an organization dedicated to saving biological diversity in our oceans. And a lot of people thought, the oceans are so big, they'll take care of themselves. Why worry? But by that time, we were already missing so many living things. We had imperiled so many living things in the ocean. The blue whales, the biggest animals that ever lived on Earth, were almost all gone. And it was true with so many kinds of living things. We had green parks on land, bigger and bigger, better and better. We needed blue parks in the oceans, places where people don't harm living things, but where we go and watch them and study them 
and protect them and celebrate them. It not only makes sense intellectually, but it also emotionally is the right thing for us to do, to take care, be good to that which gave us life and still does today. It's what Marine Conservation Institute knows best, does best, and it's really, really important. We can't wait. We've got to do it now. And Elliot says it best, we have to do it now. Now is the time, please consider your contribution to the Marine Conservation Institute. 25 years is no small achievement, but it's really just a drop in this giant blue uh, pond that we call our oceans and, and what our futures have. What are the next 25 years? What are the next 100 years, the next 500 years? What is the next thousand years? It all begins now. That's why we all have to do our part. We all have to play a role in it. 25 years of conservation success in the Marine Conservation Institute, who focuses on safeguarding biodiversity. They follow the science. I mean, the best way to, to lead anything, follow the science. That will inform the best strategies. They're collaborative in their approach, bringing together experts from science, advocacy, politics, economics, everything coming to the table to find real and lasting solutions. This is a small organization. It needs your help, but it is mighty. It is absolutely mighty. And together, we don't have to just imagine what the future will look like. We can make it. So consider your donation and uh, supporting the Marine Conservation Institute. And let's make these next 25 years, these next 100 years come together. Um, some of the places uh, that the Marine Conservation Institute has supported are, of course, places that are extraordinarily close to my heart. And, you know, the blue parks that we're going to share, the new uh, award winners that we're going to be announcing a little bit later in the uh, in the evening are also places that I've been um, fortunate to go to, or at least one of the places um, that I've been fortunate to go to. Um, but Marine Conservation Institute has done such a great job at, at, at protecting our marine national monuments. Um, Papa Hanau Mokuakea Marine National Monument, one of the largest conservation areas on the planet in the Northwest Hawaiian Islands, is a major focus uh, for MCI. Um, and, it's a, and it's a bipartisan place, right? I mean, here's, here's me out there in the field with a bunch of lace and albatross, um, truly one of the greatest uh, opportunities I've ever had in my life um, to spend time with, with this with this. Uh, unfortunately, um, in increasingly rarer and rarer um, bird that is so affectionate, that is monogamous. Uh, it's the oldest living uh, documented bird in the world. Wisdom um, is there on Midway Atoll. Um, and, you know, when you have these kinds of moments, um, I always say I wasn't much of a birder before, <laughs> before I actually spent a whole lot of time out at Midway. But sitting there for hours and watching the interactions of these different animals on this island really made me understand that even though places are far away, even though they're, they're considered far flung, maybe we'll never visit them, maybe we shouldn't even visit them, um, whatever the, 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 the case may be, they still are part of this fabric that we are all part of. They're part of our lives. Um, and protecting them is protecting us, it's protecting the world we know. And so <clears throat> it's also the first place where I saw the tremendous and devastating impacts of a remote, more or less uninhabited island and plastics in the stomachs of these lace and albatross. Lace and albatross. You can see in a photo here now with the bottle caps and fishing lures and um, action figures. Even from my childhood, I, I used to say this: "This is my this is my childhood washing up on these beaches because it's the plastic just never goes away." Um, really forces us to really think about what's important and what is it that we want to think about for our future. What is it we want our future to be? Don't imagine the future. We have to make it together. Um, spinner dolphins live in the lagoon out there. Uh, they're residents. They go out into the open ocean, though. And a lot of these animals, like the lace and albatross, um, they connect us. They travel thousands of miles. It was years later, I was in the Aleutian Islands. I see those same birds 
flying across the crest of a boat that we're on a different uh, expedition on. Um, it might have been one of those birds I had seen down in the Hawaii, Northwest Hawaiian Islands. Um, the connectivity is really just something that we're only beginning to understand. And, and having the opportunity to see a place that was is 583,000 square miles, by the way, making it one of the largest conservation areas in the world, started in 2006 by Bush and then expanded by Obama in 2016, um, for me was the opportunity of a lifetime. And I hope that future generations have that same opportunity that it's there for them. Um, on the whole other end of the spectrum, 1,200 miles southwest of Honolulu, Hawaii is uh, Palmyra Atoll, uh, which is where this photo was taken. And one of the most beautifully vibrant ecosystems that I've ever seen. Uh, in many ways, it, it is the uh, example of what you would think of paradise to be. And, um, and to know that it's a baseline, it's not just a pretty place. It's not a place we, just, we can go or just visit. But to think that these places are the baseline for scientists to say, this is what it should look like. This is the best example of what it should look like without us. Nothing is, of course, untouched anymore by humanity. But these places are the best example of what that could be. And it gives us something to say, this is what we can work towards. And that's what we're here to do tonight. We're here to work together towards that and try and, and, and protect these places to get involved um, and to defend these areas, to defend our marine protected areas from attacks, from, uh, from administrations, um, and, and to uh, chart the progress of conservation around the world through things like the Marine Protection Atlas that was launched by MCI, Marine Conservation Institute, and advocating for our conservation goals. Um, you know, these, these areas, these specific marine monuments um, are here and are protected because of the efforts of groups like the Marine Conservation Institute. So please consider your support. I'm going to see that number move up. I haven't seen it move up for a, a couple minutes now. So please uh, consider clicking the link below and let's get that donation number up. And you know what? We've just got a donation in from, hang on, information is coming in in real time here. <clears throat> Sam Dakin, board member for the Marine Conservation Institute. We just got $25,000, $25,000 donation from Sam. Thank you, Sam. Um, you're 25,000 for 25 years. Let's see if we can get another 25,000. Let's build on those 25 years of conservation success because your donation will not only help us get there, but this generous, generous contribution uh, from Sam um, is even more powerful because all of your donations are going to be matched. Um, so please match, uh, contribute tonight. Let's match those donations. Be generous because your donation right now is going to be doubled. Um, it's going to be doubled. Um, so uh, let me also now introduce apologize we're doing this live. Um, I want to introduce someone incredible. Uh, we heard some of the sounds uh, of Bernie Krause, uh, not just sounds, an experience really. Um, he's a soundscape ecologist, which is uh, as somebody who is just so passionate about multi-dimensional storytelling. Um, it's, just, uh, it's just the coolest thing uh, because our world, if you close your eyes, a great soundscape can take you to a place. Um, Bernie uh, began his professional career as a recording engineer and a backup studio guitarist in the early Motown sessions. I uh, joined the Weavers. He filled in tenor positions, originally created by Pete Seeger, performed at Carnegie Hall with them in 1963, and uh, helped introduce the Moog synthesizer group um, to pop music and film. And, um, oh, I'm sorry. And, uh, Bernie is, um, uh, Bernie's work is featured in so many albums of the era, including George Harrison, Mick Jagger, David Byrne, Brian, you know, Van Morrison. The list is just honestly just anything you can think of. And they've been heard on over 135 major feature films like Apocalypse Now, Love Story, Castaway, Rosemary's Baby. Um, his history is just absolutely uh, incredible. But honestly, it's, it's hearing the work that makes the difference. Here. You really have to appreciate um, what he's been doing with soundscape ecology. It's really a, a, a new field, uh, new in the sense of, you know, beginning in 
Um, he started it in 1981, but as a sound designer, um, his sound sculptures started to spread to places like the California Academy of Sciences, the Smithsonian, the American Museum of Natural History, New York, London, um, and all over the place. Uh, and, and ultimately, um, he ha has had a, a U.S. premiere of his installation currently showing at the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts, and has a book about the power of tranquility. And honestly, I can't speak enough about the power of just incredible audio. Um, if you have a picture and you have no narration, um, no music, um, of course, music can be part of the audio experience, but these kinds of soundscapes have the, have can truly immerse us. And that's what we're trying to do. We want to be immersed in our blue planet. Um, so with that, I want to share a little bit of Bernie's work with you. My name is Bernie Krauss, and my field is soundscape ecology, a subject I helped to introduce to environmental studies. I began recording animals in marine habitats over 50 years ago, but it wasn't until the early 1990s that I actually began to hear radical changes in biomes such as coral reefs. We'd always had visual clues about the effects of human behavior on habitats, but what does a living reef soundscape reveal when it's healthy? What happens to its voice when the reef is under stress or dying? Well, here are two 15 second examples from the same reef in Fiji. The first soundscape represents the living section with the static voices of 11 fish species. The second is the same reef, only the dying part. And in it, you'll only hear a few snapping shrimp left. In the image of sound called a spectrogram, notice how the fish in the living segment on the left are represented by a density of vertical lines in the upper half of the page. In the right-hand segment, notice what's missing. The surface ocean wave signals are represented at the bottom of both pages. Work being done by the team at MCI addresses these issues, looking and listening to every expression of marine habitats to understand the problems and to help mitigate the loss of these precious and fragile systems. MCI needs your generous support to ensure that these biomes remain viable. MCI's mission cannot succeed without your help. Thank you. Tonight, I ask each and every one of you to reawaken your primal connection to the ocean. I want to share with you an excerpt from a soundscape collage that features humpback, killer, and sperm whales, as well as a myriad of reef fish and the rhythmic hum of crashing waves. Take this moment just to simply listen and hear the voices of the sea. These are the voices that the Marine Conservation Institute is working tirelessly to ensure that they never fade away. Mm-hmm. 
You can hear the beating heart of the ocean. Let's not imagine the future. Let's make it together. Please, let's start with 30 by 30. We were using the number 30. Why don't we start with 30 as a donation? Let's think about that. Three zero. Can you give us $3,000 to support the Marine Conservation Institute tonight? You hear the absolute beauty of Dr. Bernie Krause's soundscapes and you realize this is the heart of our planet. This is the heart and the, 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 the lifeblood that connects all of us. Consider giving us 3,000. If you can't do that, any amount that you can contribute, maybe it's 30, maybe it's 300, makes a difference in protecting our planet and the future. Um, Heather is a young mother from Tennessee and she supports the Marine Conservation Institute and our vision for our ocean. I'd like to share a special message from Heather. Hello, my name is Heather and I am a health and life coach and I support Marine Conservation Institute because making sure that our oceans are protected is important to me so that my daughter and the children around the world can continue to have air to breathe and live a wonderful life on this beautiful planet. We just have to make sure that we're doing our part and I feel like I'm able to do that with Marine Conservation Institute. Will you join Heather in inspiring us with your donation will you join heather will you support the institute's great work now's the time you see that number it's going up i love it tim and mary evnin six thousand five hundred dollar contribution thank you so much for your support thank you for your donation to help support the marine conservation institute thank you for supporting our planet and for people like heather forrester and the great work of the Marine Conservation Institute. And of course, don't forget, we've got raffles, prizes, giveaways, books, trips, stays. You can go up to wine country. You can go all kinds of interesting places. Bid on the silent auction items now. And you can follow that URL on your screen. Um, but you see that number. We're getting there. We're getting there. And we've got a little bit of time. Um, and we have a lot of... Also go ahead. Absolutely. Experience here. Um, I am uh, at this point, you know, I think I would just refer back to uh, the wisdom and voices of both Elliot and Bernie. Um, both provide us a career. Um, in these fields in which their testimony of what they've seen and what they've experienced really points to the decline in our oceans, the decline in marine life that um, really is impacting us and the chance at a healthy and sustainable future. As just one example, um, a recent example, that there's many out there. Um, we know that fishing has threatened over 95% of sharks and rays from a recent IUCN report. And a third of those are threatened with extinction. This is, um, these are numbers that ought to, I guess, make us all mad. Um, but at the same time, who are we mad at? Well, we have to own some of this ourselves. Um, for decades, we've been watching this escalating triple crisis. Um, the industrialization of the oceans is, is just lagged a little bit behind the industrialization on land, but we're seeing it coming. Um, everything from you know ever noisy impacts of oil and gas and drilling and exploration to a future with you know lots of deep sea mining, which could potentially you know destroy thousand year old ecosystems on the sea floor. Um, can you imagine what a whale thinks of all of this noise in the world in which that really is its picture? It puts out an acoustic picture of the world, right? It doesn't see the world, it hears the world. And if all that noise is going on, um, that that's that's pretty I'm uh, everything is Yeah, I'm kind of, we're kinda of losing Lance, but you know, I think to Lance's point, you know, the Marine Conservation Institute is making a difference. Um, 
Lance, can you, your Switch is a small organization, but you have a huge impact um, with high-level international areas. And, and, and how does the Institute stand apart in such a big pond? Right. So I hope you're hearing me again. Um, we are. Good. Um, I, I think, well, the first thing that comes to mind for me is the, um, is the thought from the book from E.O. Wilson, the famed evolutionary biologist, which is the little things that run the world. Um, the pandemic ought to be a real example of little things with big impact, right? Well, I like to think of Marine Conservation Institute, not as little, but as an organization with big impact. We have a, you know, a very talented staff and our staff has envisioned, you know, this new world. So we're, we're hopeful that we're going to see, um, it's our decision to make. What is the future we want to have? Our goal is to have the most abundant future possible for the oceans. And we do that by strongly protecting the ocean. Our voice has been um, one of the strongest in beating this drum from the Marine Protection Atlas to our blue parks that you're going to hear about a little bit more in, in just a little bit. But we're also thinking about future generations in terms of the people that we uh, want to see carry forward our legacy and be the next generation's voice. And to that end, we train and mentor students and lots of early career professionals and interns from around the world. Um, and we have a special message here from one of our uh, young high school um, fellows from this summer that I'd like to share with you, Kiara. Hi, my name is Kiara Lazarga, and I'm one of this year's winner of the Jedi Ocean Award. And something I really loved from my time with Marine Conservation Institute was meeting new people who share a similar passion or interest in marine conservation and has helped me feel very much inspired and welcome. So Ian, I, I think I'll just, um, before we pass it over to uh, Sarah, um, Dr. Sarah Hamid, I just wanna um, share one thought. And that is that one of the great threats we have here to our ocean uh -oh. well, well, we're, we're having a little trouble with uh, uh, Marine Conservation Institute's President Lance Morgan. Um, oh, he's back. Lance, you're back. <laughs> I think you're having some internet, maybe, issues there. Yeah, I don't know where the internet issues are. Hopefully, you can hear me. Anyway, if you're one of those people who thinks someone no. Um, well, Sarah, maybe we not. could talk. I think I, mean, I can finish uh, his uh, thought. I know yeah, what please, he's about please to Please do. Say. And maybe we could talk a little bit about blue parks as well, because we keep talking about that a little bit Absolutely. and hinting at it. But maybe maybe people want to know exactly what is that, because we were going to hear about more of those. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So uh, I think what uh, President Dr. Lance Morgan was trying to say is it is folly to think that somebody else is going to save the ocean. We've got to do it. Um, and that's exactly what inspired us to uh, launch the Blue Parks Initiative. The vision of the Blue Parks Initiative is a connected network of well-protected areas around the global ocean that represents every single region of the global ocean and uh, represents every single ecosystem type, you know, from the tropical coral reefs to the deep sea canyons. Um, mm -hmm. to ensure that we're safeguarding marine life uh, around the globe. And we know that this kind of blue parks network is what's needed in order to safeguard marine biodiversity. You mentioned the deep canyons. I mean, there's still discoveries being made every day that affect science, that affect medicine. Uh, obviously something that we're all very focused on now. I mean, in many ways, we, we protect a lot of these places because of the things that we don't know. Uh, we don't know the questions to ask. We don't know what they may provide in the future, but we know they have value because they've always provided value to us. 
That's right. Um, and what's interesting is there's actually been a, a lot of science, a lot of focus in the science community in the last couple of decades on what kinds of protection works. Um, and so we know that marine, co marine protected areas work, but they only work when they are well designed, located in the right places, with the right rules, with effective management and equitable governance, um, and strong protections. So we took what we learned from the science about what works to conserve marine life, and we turned that into a set of criteria, and that has become the Blue Park standard. So marine protected areas that achieve this standard earn the prestigious Blue Park Award. Um, and, and, and Blue Parks and marine protected areas, they're not just, I mean, we're, we're using terms like global and connectivity, and but they affect local communities as well, right? That's right. Um, Blue Parks are, are, you know, there's so many ways in which they support local communities. Um, they particularly are, are, you know, support local economies. You can think about tourism. Tourists want to go to places with vital ecosystems. Well, it's in the blue parks that you find vital ecosystems with lots of wildlife to go look at. Uh, they're also really important for food security. Um, inside of protected areas, fish populations grow and they end up becoming sources for um, outside of those protected areas, for fish areas. So communities that rely on fish for their food, uh, you know, blue parks help sustain them um, and give them that food, food security that's so important. There's a great example of this, and the, the picture that's come up on your screen is from Inhamban Bay in Mozambique. Mm. Um, there are a group of communities around Inhamban Bay that were observing that they were working harder and harder, going further and further to catch fewer and fewer fish that their communities relied on. Mm. And so their communities were suffering. And they came together um, into uh, a, a number of meetings and they thought through this. And, and they, what was really interesting is they dug back into some older traditions that, had, uh, that they'd forgotten for a couple of decades. And they used these traditional ocean rules as the basis for protecting a set of areas in their bay uh, that were the nursery grounds for the fish that they relied on. So these are seagrass uh, meadows and uh, mangrove forests. They set up these protections and by golly, they worked and they started seeing fish populations rebound. And so they've expanded those protections over the last number of years. And other communities are looking at this success and going, huh, you know, they, they're onto something there. And so um, this is just one example of the ways that blue parks support thriving communities. Yeah, well, we're really at a crossroads of environmental health and human health. Um, you know, healthy That's oceans right. means protein source. It means um, so much to uh, so much to the whole planet, to everywhere, no matter where you are, locally, um, wherever this finds you. Uh, which is, you know, a great reminder, of course, about what has brought all of us here uh, together tonight. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really great. Thank you for explaining that, Sarah. I appreciate that. Um, the Philippines. Um, Angelique, tell us about her. Yeah, so I, uh, what I wanted to say about the Blue Park Awards is yeah. how much excitement that they bring. They honor the community leaders and the governments and the managers and the rangers who have poured their heart and souls into protecting these special places. And, uh, and these are folks who don't often get a lot of recognition. So I remember back to our very mm -hmm. first uh, Blue Park Awards in 2017. And Angelique Sanko was the recipient of one of those awards for Tubataha Reefs Natural Park in the Philippines. She and her team are just, um, they're just fantastic. They're phenomenal. They, they really do, I mean, you know, dedicate themselves to protecting this incredibly special place that I've never been to, but I really want to go, um, Tubataha Reefs in the Philippines. So um, I think we have a clip of her talking about what the award meant to them you know, this recognition for their hard work. The challenges we face emanate from outside our boundaries, primarily climate change and marine debris. 
within our boundaries, a constellation of actors who's putting their heads together to tackle these issues. Being a blue park is a mark of an effectively managed marine protected area, and it has helped to crystallize support for the Tugataha reefs and has expanded our constellation of actors. The recognition is a source of pride for us, for our partners, and for our benefactors, because it validates the fruits of our collective efforts. As the managers of Tugataha, we can only promise you one thing, that we will do a better job. Because after all, we are a blue park. The Philippines, I've got to go at some point. I was supposed to go before all this, this, we all know, happened, but, ugh, oh, it'd be great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Well, I hope you get to meet Angelique. She's awesome. <laughs> I certainly hope so, too. Lance, you're back with us? <laughs> I certainly hope so. And uh, ah, you sound good. to Tubataha, but I have got the chance to meet Angelique, and she is wonderful. Uh, person and uh, her, uh, you might not know this. Her, uh, she's known as Mama Ranger, um, as mm. a person who really gets out there and you know fights to protect that area. She is the one on the patrol boats on the islands. You know she covers all the bases. She's got a great staff as well. But her heart and soul is in Kubataha, and, and it's uh, it's inspiring to know someone like that. He's such an ocean hero. Um, so yeah, so I think we're ready for our um, the big moment. Big unveil, yeah. So yeah, I yeah, the big moment. Out. What an honor! What a, what an honor! Blue parks and blue sparks. Okay, so we get to bring together an entire team of ocean champions. They're building the lifeboat. They're protecting marine life through the next decades. Um, the Blue Parks Awards really are the Oscars of the ocean. Um, and now it's really our pleasure to welcome four new Blue Parks and people that champion them into the Blue Parks family. So, I don't know, do we, is there a drum roll or do we have too much of a delay for that? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, all right, so the first one, uh, 2021 Blue Parks Award winners are, and I think I'm supposed to open an envelope, but I don't have an envelope present. So I'm just gonna go for it here. I imagine I'm opening an envelope. Pardinas de Lorena National Park in Cuba, a place uh, very close to my heart. It's really where I uh, began my commercial filmmaking career, uh, working on issues there, working with the University of Havana, and really understanding the role of local scientists, local communities, um, of course, uh, partnerships, and working with uh, groups here in the United States. Um, mm -hmm. Pardinas de Lorena National Park is such a beautiful uh, resilient coral reef in the Caribbean Sea of Cuba and as a model for healthy ecosystems in the region. Um, top predators, of course, that's what took me there. Sharks for Shark Week originally. So um, congratulations to uh, to the garden uh, gardens of the queen in uh, Cuba. Our next winner uh, is Casite Mpunguti Marine Park and Reserve in Kenya. It's off the south coast of Kenya. And it protects a collection of small islands uh, surrounded by vibrant coral reefs as well. Um, and it's teeming with dolphins, turtles, and fish. So uh, congratulations as well to Casite Mpunguti. We also have uh, Riuni. It's in the North Adriatic Sea in Croatia, uh, another place I've been very fortunate enough uh, to have an opportunity to go to and see the absolutely stunning beauty. Uh, this is a national park, a longstanding sanctuary for lush seagrass meadows and colorful rocky reefs um, and it supports uh, as many and all most of the blue parks do a great diversity of marine wildlife so congratulations uh, to Bree Uni in Croatia. And last but not least our fourth blue parks award winner uh, Revi, uh, <laughs> Revia Hihedo why can I not get this one right? <laughs> of all of the things I got so far, this is the one I'm stuck on. Um, but Revilla Hijero National Park in Mexico is located around offshore islands in the eastern tropical Pacific. It is home to at least 366 species of fish, including 26 species that are found nowhere else. Uh, and is an important hub for migratory sharks and sea turtles. So congratulations to all those communities and managers who have worked so hard to make these outstanding uh, MPAs, these marine protected areas, true blue parks. Let's hear it from them all now in their own words. Hola, mi nombre es Janet Forneiro Martín Vian 
y soy especialista principal de conservación del Grupo Empresarial Flora y Fauna de Cuba, a cargo de la Administración del Parque Nacional Jardines de la Reina. Nos honra que nuestro parque sea distinguido como Blue Park en la categoría dorada, un reconocimiento al exitoso trabajo de conservación que por más de 25 años se ha realizado en Jardines de la Reina. Este no es un éxito exclusivo nuestro. Las autoridades de conservación y pesqueras, la administración del parque y la compañía turística que opera en él, decidimos trabajar juntos e incansables por una meta común, la conservación y el uso sostenible de los recursos en Jardines de la Reina. Hoy nuestro parque se enorgullece de contar con una riqueza y abundancia de vida silvestre que le ha ganado elogios y el reconocimiento como una de las áreas marinas protegidas más destacadas del Caribe y del mundo. Este premio es la confirmación. El premio Blue Park es también un estímulo que impactará positivamente la continuidad de nuestro empeño. Con una mayor visibilidad y crédito a nuestros esfuerzos, se reforzará el apoyo necesario para expandir nuestro trabajo, alcanzar nuevas metas y alentar con nuestro ejemplo una mayor efectividad de la conservación en Cuba y en todo el Caribe. Tendremos que superar debilidades persistentes, pero estamos seguros de que con ello beneficiaremos no solo a la biodiversidad del parque, sino sobre todo a las comunidades caribeñas que dependen de la sostenibilidad de estos recursos para su sustento, hoy y en el futuro. Agradecemos este premio y aceptamos con gusto el desafío y la responsabilidad que nos impone. Muchas gracias. My name is Paul Wambi. I'm the warden in charge of Kisite Mpunguti Marine and National Park and Reserve, which is found in Kenya. Kisite Mpunguti is the biggest marine park in Kenya, uh, covering 39 square kilometers. Kisite Mpunguti was formed in the year 1973, but was officially gazetted in the year 1978. And it was formed to protect the scenic islands and the endemic wildlife species found within the park. Kisite Mpunguti is uh, very special because of the outstanding universal values, which includes the marine mammals, the marine reptiles. We also have several species of birds. We also have several species of corals and uh, several species of fish, which is actually supporting the livelihood of the local communities. Apart from that, uh, Kisite also supports the livelihood, livelihood of the communities because tourism, which is uh, the key economic activity of the local communities here, depends uh, uh, on Kisite or depends in Kisite and therefore this is very critical to the local communities found within the uh, surroundings of the MPA. Now as regards to this award, uh, Kisite Mpuguti is delighted to receive this award and now we are joining other blue parks in the world. That simply means the visibility of Kisite has now increased and moving forward I know we shall be working very closely with other MPAs uh, managers who have already received this award and we shall work very hard to ensure that the outstanding universal values of this park is not compromised and my promise is that when another evaluation is done then we are able to confirm that what we have is not compromised and even that probably what we have has even been um, uh, we that we have even been able to conserve much better than we had done before and so that both the present and future generation have something really to enjoy and to survive on. Thank you so much. Dear Blue Park colleagues, my name is Marno Milotic, PhD, and are currently the appointed general manager of the public institution Bruni National Park in Croatia. I have to say that we are very excited to receive the Blue Park Award. It is a great recognition of our work in nature protected area. We are established as a national park in 1983 and the protected area includes 14 islands 
within our territory, of which 80% is the sea area. We are continuously working on improving the marine protection within our borders, but also on the education and inclusion in marine protection of the community around us. Part of our great work is also education and networking of other marine parks, so we would have the continuous and comparative models through the Adriatic and the Mediterranean area. We hope that this award and this recognition is also one step forward of reaching our goals to be part of the family of leading marine protected areas and that this unites us even better in preservation of the marine areas around the world. Thank you enormously in the name of Bruni National Park for this Blue Park Award. Hola, soy Yelen Díaz Frías, encargada de la Dirección del Parque Nacional Revillagigedo, México. A nombre del Comisionado Nacional de Áreas Naturales Protegidas y de todo el equipo, queremos agradecer por haber sido galardonados con tan importante premio, el Blue Park. El Parque Nacional Revillagigedo posee una riqueza natural caracterizada por una gran variedad de especies de flora y fauna terrestre y marina de alto valor biológico. Desde su decreto, Siendo el área marina de no pesca más grande de América del Norte, México ha refrendado su compromiso frente a los acuerdos internacionales y continúa trabajando en la preservación del patrimonio natural de nuestro país y del mundo. Recibir el premio Blue Park significa reconocer el esfuerzo, la dedicación, el compromiso de todos los actores que inciden en la conservación de nuestra área natural protegida, guardaparques, gestores, administradores, instituciones de gobierno, académicos, organizaciones y todos los aliados que se suman a la protección de nuestros parques marinos. El ser parte de la Red de Áreas Marinas Protegidas de Blue Park es un honor y también nos motiva a continuar trabajando para mejorar el manejo efectivo en pro de la conservación y defensa de las especies y ecosistemas de México y nuestro planeta. Gracias, representaremos digna y orgullosamente a los parques azules del mundo. Beautiful, huh? Yeah, beautiful. wonderful, and congratulations to all the managers. I, we know how much work it takes to get a Blue Park Award. Absolutely, so much congratulations work. to everybody, uh, all of our 2021 Blue Parks Award winners, and thank you to everybody for being patient with us. We've had a few glitches along the way, as these things uh, do uh, in the era that we all live in, but you know what truly matters tonight is protecting oceans and um, considering your donation to support Marine Conservation Institute to continue to protect places like these that we're that we had just uh, watched. And as a reminder, um, uh, we need your help right now. Three hundred dollars or thirty dollars. Every little bit makes a huge difference in the conservation efforts of these fragile and irreplaceable oceans. And these blue um, parks um, begin someplace. They begin with blue sparks. And uh, I want to, oh, you know what? I just got a message. Uh, Gail Osharenko and Oren Young uh, from the board have upped the ante. Uh, they have a challenge match with an incredible $15,000 donation and they're calling on others to join. Um, please, uh, $15,000. Thank you so much to Gail and Oren. Incredible donation. This is your chance. If you're here at the gala, you love the ocean. Our oceans are restorative. When I need to rejuvenate, I come here to a favorite beach in Santa Barbara. I breathe the salt air and soak in the rich diversity of life from anemones, crabs, and seagrass to snowy egrets. Marine Conservation Institute is all about protecting and enhancing biodiversity, being sure it will be here for next generations. We can't all do this important scientific and policy work. We may not have the time and energy. We may not have the expertise, the education, or the temperament, but we can all participate by supporting those who do. I invite you to be a part of the team by giving generously tonight and throughout the year, you can make a difference. 
All right, thanks again to Gail and, um, and for that incredible donation and Oren for the incredible donation from the board. Um, but we were talking about um, uh, Blue Sparks, Sarah, sorry, and, and Dr. Lance Morgan, president of MCI. Yeah, so Blue Sparks, that has been our uh, latest focus. Um, Blue Sparks are the marine protected area projects that are on their way to becoming tomorrow's Blue Parks. So we collaborate with community leaders, um, local community leaders, and we support their efforts to implement effective marine protected areas. We consult with them, uh, we connect them with um, technical expertise, and uh, we celebrate their mm -hmm. progress towards becoming a blue park. All right, I'll include it. Guys, yeah, you can just text. You can just text me oh. that stuff. So awesome. some of our and oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, I got I got lost in the feed somewhere there. Um, but I wanted to say that some of our Blue Spark projects are um, already well established marine protected areas like Cabo Pomo National Park. They're just you know improving their management, making sure we're we're consulting with them to to help make sure they're meeting the Blue Park standard, um, and they're well on their way to becoming a Blue Park. And others are really at the beginning of becoming a blue park uh, and they, they need to get designated. So an example of that is uh, a group that we're working with in the, on the central coast of Chile, Fundacion, uh, Fundacion Rambientes. Um, they're working to create a new sanctuary on that central coast of Chile, Piedra del Viento. And we've, uh, with our support, they finally gained um, uh, legal uh, designation from the president just earlier this year. So I think we have a statement from them about their engagement with Blue Parks. Hi everyone, my name is Juan Esteban Budasoni. I'm one of the directors and co-founder of Fundación Rompientes. And greetings from the Piedra del Viento Mining Sanctuary. We have been partnering with MCI's at Blue Spark, and we really believe that being a Blue Spark is just the beginning in order to create an area who is able to provide effective management plan. Hoy tenemos la gran oportunidad de poder conservar el patrimonio natural de la zona costera de Topocalma y Puertecillo en la comuna de Litueche, región de O'Higgins. Este lugar es una verdadera reserva de agua, de vida y de tradiciones, donde la misma comunidad ha decidido tomar acción y transformar su lugar de vida en un santuario. As you may be know, Chile is one of the leaders in creating MPAs. However, we do have a challenge as a, as a country in order to provide effective management plans and with experience, scientific-based knowledge and adapting to the local context. With the help of MCI, we believe that we will achieve this goal. So thank you, everyone. And thank you, MCI and Dr. Lance Morgan and Sarah Hammett in believing in this. And we hopefully we can meet each other back in Chile. Thank you, everyone, and keep safe. Bye bye. All right. Um, Dr. Lance Morgan, tell us how does this connect to 30 by 30? Right. Well, as you um, many said, we're at 3%. 30% is a long ways away. That, that's many million square kilometers of ocean that we still need to protect. But blue sparks are where we need to go. So we need your help that we can assist these areas and really fill that gap. The current trend won't get us there. We need to accelerate our efforts and really um, encourage as many blue sparks in as many places around the world as we can to get to that 30% target. That's really incredible. And I just got some more breaking news. We just had two donations come in. I want to acknowledge and say special thanks to uh, Douglas Hanford, $1,000 just came in. Um, Mike Gravitz, uh, part of the team from MCI, just donated $250. That's how I know all of you, actually. Mike introduced me uh, to your organization a long time ago, an awesome person and, and giving to the cause. Um, so it's great. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, Douglas Hanford for your donations tonight. We really appreciate it.
And obviously, everyone, we hope to uh, we hope to see that number continue up. So consider your donations as well. And don't forget, we got the raffle too. Let's not forget about the raffle. Um, thank you again for everybody. The, the work that's being done in Chile is is amazing, uh, an absolutely incredible an incredible place. And to hear from all the partners and the Blue Sparks uh, Blue Spark effort and commitment that is coming. Um, from Panama uh, is something else that I'd like to talk about. Um, Shirley uh, Binder, Director of Protected Areas and Biodiversity, Ministry of the Environment of, Pan uh, of, of Panama, is tonight pledging that Coiba National Park is joining Blue Sparks Network and is committed to achieving the Blue Parks standard. Uh, Coiba is joining a network of four other Blue Parks in the Eastern Tropical Pacific, uh, migratory pathways for sharks, marine mammals, fish, protecting generations to come. And we have a video from uh, Shirley Binder tonight uh, that we'd love to share with you. Mi nombre es Shirley Binder, directora nacional de áreas protegidas y biodiversidad del Ministerio de Ambiente de Panamá, encargados de velar y conservar nuestras áreas protegidas. Para Panamá es un honor que el Parque Nacional Coiba, de ahora en adelante, sea considerado un Blue Spark, para convertirse en un Blue Park, reafirmando el compromiso de Panamá de velar por la conservación de los recursos marino costeros. El Parque Nacional Coiba es de los parques marinos más grandes e importantes de Panamá. Cuenta con la isla más grande del Pacífico Mesoamericano, la isla Coiba, y otras 38 islas e islotes menores rodeados por alta biodiversidad marina, que incluye la tortuga carey. En Coiba es considerado un santuario de tortuga carey, ya que los estudios científicos de los últimos 10 años han marcado casi 600 individuos de esta especie en peligro crítico de extinción. El Parque Nacional Coiba posee el arrecife de coral más extenso de Centroamérica, con al menos 13 especies de corales formadores de colonias y más de 800 especies de peces, tanto arrecifales como comerciales, en donde podemos incluir el gran tiburón ballena. Se han reportado al menos 15 especies de cetáceos, dentro de las cuales podemos mencionar la población del Pacífico Sur y el Pacífico Norte de la ballena jorobada, siendo este parque la zona más al sur hasta donde se distribuye la población del norte. Adicionalmente, el Parque Nacional Coiba es la única área protegida que salvaguarda a una población de guacamaya roja y bandera, que actualmente se encuentra en recuperación. Por último, y de las tantas cosas que podemos decir de este santuario marino, la isla Coiba y sus islotes emergieron con el cierre del Istmo de Panamá, lo que permitió que en esta isla y sus alrededores exista un alto endemismo, desde monos aulladores hasta diferentes especies de corales. Este video puede ser utilizado por el... Direct, Director Binder, thank you. Welcome to the Blue Sparks family. Uh, we appreciate uh, your contribution uh, to conservation on behalf of Panama. Um, and again, uh, a reminder, we make this future together. We have to do this together. And we are doing it together with yet another donation, $5,000 from Nantita Parker. Uh, thank you so much. We have another, she's a member of the board that increases the board match to $50,000. That means your contribution up to $50,000 is being matched um, through those donations. So thank you, uh, Nandita Parker for that. And Nandita also uh, has a message for us too. Hello, my name is Nandita Parker. As a fund manager, I'm used to evaluating companies and investing in those that generate the highest returns. When I looked at the world of ocean conservation and I mapped it, I realized that the work of creating marine protected areas is the highest and most impactful tool of ocean conservation and climate change protection. The scientific work that Lance and his team are doing helps governments around the world in making good policy decisions. Our job is to provide them with those tools that'll help us get to the goal of protecting 30% of the oceans by 2030. We are deeply grateful for your presence here and your presence here encourages our team and supports their drive and their determination to making this happen. Thank you very much for being here. Namaste from India. Okay, it's incredible. Everyone, we are getting pretty close to the end here. We're wrapping up this challenge match appeal. We've got a match up to 50,000 donations. Please make them now, they'll be matched. 
Um, and thank you again to our sponsors. Thank you to all of our generous donors that have contributed here this evening. Uh, so far, we've raised over $92,000 to protect our wild ocean places and build a new and build a network, rather expand our network of blue parks around the globe. Um, don't forget, we have the silent auction that's going to remain open until Friday at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time and the challenge match that doesn't end tonight that will run all the way through till New Year's Eve. So you've got time, but don't wait. You don't have time. You need to go do it now while we're all here together. The season for giving. Consider your contribution. And don't forget, we also have the raffles, prizes and giveaways, T-shirts, hats, trips. Um, a $50 donation gets you into, uh, into it. $100. And we've got signed books that I'm giving away as well. Um, so please definitely consider getting in that. We also have framed prints, photo prints, beautiful photo prints as well. Um, you've got the call to action there on the bottom of your screen, text 25 to 202 858 uh, or you can visit that URL and you can get involved in the raffle. There's some pretty incredible prizes there. I think I'm going to get in on that the second I log off on this or whether it logs me off based on my internet connection here tonight. Um, but there's some really good stuff. I'm thinking maybe that wine country trip, Lance, I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? Are you, I don't know if you're still there. Maybe not. <laughs> I'm, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Um, but yeah, there's a photo giveaway and, you know, I can't emphasize enough the importance of this. You know, when we, we ask for help and we say that, you know, this is, this is, this is something that makes a difference. It helps protect a place. But, but it does. It, it, it really is, is the backbone of how people know about these places. Um, I mean, so many of them are, are part of our health. As, as the founder uh, of the Marine Conservation Institute led this evening with by saying every second breath comes from our ocean. Um, this isn't something that's just for us. Uh, it is, uh, I'm sorry, that isn't just for, for nature and protecting the, and, and the creatures and, and animals and, and everything that lives in our ocean, but it's also that's something for us. This is about self-preservation, um, but this is also about supporting an organization that's small but mighty and makes a difference on behalf of our blue planet. Um, so with that, uh, I want to uh, end with uh, some testimonials from our board members, interns, donors, uh, everybody um, and uh, that, have, that, that was uh, willing to contribute some, some final thoughts. And thank you again for, for everything. Um, with that, uh, let's take a look. It is a joy to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Marine Conservation Institute. And I want to wish you guys a happy, happy quarter century and lots more to come. I'm Marshall Beeling, and I'm not a scientist, but I'm very lucky. I get to hang out with the great scientists at Marine Conservation Institute and support their critically important work, including Blue Parks Initiative and MP Atlas, the authoritative database of marine protected areas. MCI leverages decades of experience in marine science and policy work to lead this collaborative worldwide mission. They are key members of the most important global alliances and coalitions that are working to defend and advance marine protection. We cannot solve climate change without protecting our oceans, and we cannot save our oceans alone we need all hands on deck. Doing something is not nothing. It's the difference between a heartbeat and silence. Join me and jump in and let's accelerate this critical work. <laughs> Bravo, woohoo, the 25th anniversary of MCI. I'm in, are you? <laughs> Hi, I'm Allie and I was a Blue Parks intern this past spring. Um, I'm now a marine science instructor at Catalina Island Marine Institute, where I get to inspire and educate children about wild ocean places, like this one. Volunteering and giving MCI my money gives me a lot of hope and helps me look in my children's eyes um, and let them know I'm doing what I can to help save our oceans. I love this organization. It's small, but it's mighty, and I hope you do too. Hi everyone, my name is Armand McFarland. I was a science intern at the Marine Conservation Institute's lovely Petaluma office in 2019. At MCI, I worked on their Blue Parks Initiative, showcasing excellent marine protected areas and advocating for marine biodiversity. 
I absolutely loved it. The work, the culture, the coffee, it was all amazing. I cannot say enough good things about everyone at MCI. I am so glad to wish the Marine Conservation Institute and all the lovely folks there, dogs and cats included, a happy 25th anniversary. Hi, my name is David Johns. I've been supporting Marine Conservation Institute over the years without reservation because they are committed to making blue parks around the world happen. Marine protected areas work. There's no question about it. And when they're in the right place, big enough and well enforced, life recovers and injuries heal. Marine Conservation Institute makes it happen. Please join me in sharing their mission, supporting their mission, supporting their work, and thank you. Hi, my name is Lindsay and I was a Blue Parks intern this past spring. Uh, so I got to help evaluate marine protected areas for this year. And while none of mine were awarded, I believe, uh, it is very exciting to have worked at the Marine Conservation Institute. And uh, I feel it really helped me get to my current role at the Chesapeake Bay Trust, helping protect the wider Chesapeake Bay watershed. So thank you. Hello. I'm Michelle Scooby, born and raised in the Caribbean, an island at heart, and a lecturer and researcher in global environmental governance at the University of the West Indies Postgraduate Institute of International Relations. I've recently become involved with the Marine Conservation Institute as a board member. I am passionate about all things related to small island developing states, or as we're more recently known, large ocean territories. The oceans are absolutely important for islanders. They are sources of recreation, food, livelihoods, and one of the greatest legacies we can leave to future generations. I wholeheartedly support anyone committed to seeing the oceans thrive, and that is exactly what the MCI does. At achieving their biodiversity goals. It's about the people. We've got the smartest scientists in the world, and these scientists are very pragmatic. They've got the playbook, they've got the methodology, and they've got the means by which and the capabilities to both measure and manage how effective marine protected areas are achieving their goals. And it's also about the passion. The board has the passion, the team has the passion, the staff has passion. Everybody's excited about driving towards the 30 by 30 goal um, set out by the current administration, saving 30% of both the land as well as the ocean worldwide please consider supporting us. Hi, I am Natalie Udo, and I'm the chair of the Board of Directors of Marine Conservation Institute, an organization that has been fighting to protect our ocean and the marine creatures that live in it for the last 25 years. Our oceans are crucial. They are providing the oxygen we breathe they provide the livelihood of billions of people on this world, and they are the engines of the climate of the planet. And they are in distress. From here, the ocean, healthy or unhealthy, looks the same. But I've been diving for the last 30 years, and there is change. It is in distress. There is less fish, there are less sharks, and there's so much more pollution. Corals are dying as well. So it's time we help and we get into action and protect our oceans. Join me on December 9th at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Protect our oceans. Thank you. All right, you scum sucking toadies. Cough it over.